Hey, how's it going everyone? Today we're going to be doing this halftone vector effect. Now I'm going to show you two ways. One's the quick and dirty way to do it, and one's the nicer, cleaner way. So let's start off with the easy way, and we're just going to jump right into Fusion. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is make a dot. I'm just going to use a background and an ellipse mask. Bring that up to my viewer. I have a dot there. I'm going to change this background to make it square. So I'm going to go into my image, uncheck auto resolution, and make it 1920 by 1920. I'm keeping it high because we're going to have to shrink this down later on. And if I make it too small, it just it messes with stuff. So we're just going to make this one really big. So I'm going to merge that into another background. And this background, I'm going to make black. I also need to swap these around. And I need to change this background to be square as well. So now we have our dot. Now we need to have a background to size everything. I'm going to click out here. I'm going to add in another background. Merge that in. This one can be transparent. It doesn't really matter. I'll bring that up. I need to swap those. Control T to swap. And then between these two merges, I'm going to add in a transform. Control space, hit XF as a shortcut. This transform, I'm going to change edges to wrap. And then I'm just going to scale this down. And there we go, we have our pattern. Now keep it pretty small. You want your dots to be kind of small because otherwise you won't be able to see the detail. Now we just need an image to drive this. So I'm going to my media pool. I have this random girl I found on Pixabay because that's how everybody does their tutorials. Apparently, <laughs> let me know in the comments below. I don't, I don't know why they do that, but uh, apparently you just find some random picture of a girl on Pixabay and that's how you do tutorials. We're not going to merge these together. We're going to use a variable. So I'm going to bring that up and I'm going to need this to be the foreground. And then these dots are going to be, drive it as the background. All right. Now you're not going to be able to see anything. You're like nothing changed. That's because we don't have enough contrast going on. So we're going to need to do a few things. One is move this blur size up. And now you can see some of the detail there, but it's kind of reversed. We want the lighter parts to have the dots and the darker parts to kind of merge together. So I'm going to invert that, go with an invert color, and I need to put it over here. So now we need to mess with this a bit, and I'm going to do that with a brightness contrast. Two of them, actually. Grab those. One is going to go before, and one's going to go after. On this first one, I'm going to take the lift, and I'm going to push that down. And then I'm going to take the brightness, and I'm going to move it down to negative 0.5. So now we're getting some detail there. So now I can go to my second brightness contrast and I'm gonna crush these blacks a whole bunch. And I'm gonna go way up there to like 8.5 and I'm gonna bring the whites down just a little bit. It's looking inverted because I forgot to go on my ellipse mask and click invert. Now you can see we got some detail here and we can go to a transform and bring this down even more. Now we have some pretty cool detail here. Now this is the quick method, but as you can see, there's a few problems. So if we zoom in here, you can see that the dots really don't change size all that much. There's a few spots that they do, um, but then they start getting merged and blurred. It doesn't give us the level of detail that we really want. So it's a quick, easy way to do it, but let's go into a longer way that'll come out a lot cleaner. So to do that, we're going to use an P image emitter and the P image emitter is great if you want to make a grid of something or make a pattern that's really your go-to for that so let's add that in we're also going to need a P render and a 3d render go ahead and have those connected space them out we're gonna need a few more things we're gonna need a custom tool and we're gonna need a P custom all right go ahead and move your custom tool down you can plug that into the P image emitter and the P custom goes between the emitter and the render we're not going to mess with those now because you can use these later on if you want to do more, but you don't need them right off the bat. All right, I'm going to duplicate my image and just pipe that right in. If I bring up my image emitter, actually before I bring up my image emitter, chain this uh, Y density with an expression. Just chain it to the X density there and we're going to make it 0.1 to start. Otherwise it's going to be huge. Let's go ahead and look in our render. And we have an image with some little dots. Not many dots. Actually, these are just points. We don't have dots yet. So we're going to need to make dots. Now these we can make a lot smaller because we're not trying to shrink them down. So go ahead and grab a background, make it a 50 by 50, and then just grab an ellipse. And then our P image emitter, go to style and change from point to bitmap. Now we can plug this in. Now you can see we have dots, but they're huge and they're overlapping. So let's put in a way to control their size. This is what we're going to use the P custom for, part of it at least. We'll go to P custom, go to particle, and go down to size. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in three minus R plus G plus B, close that all up, times N1 
divided by a thousand. So let me explain what's going on. Under our numbers here, we have a number in one. That's the control that we're gonna use. We're gonna be using the red, green, and blue channels. So basically what's coming in from our image, we're gonna use those and at its highest point, so red equal to one, green equal one, blue equal one, dot size is gonna be zero. If you wanna reverse it for when you want the dot size to be zero at the blackest spot, just take away the three minus. But right now, the whiter it is, the smaller the dot's gonna be, the blacker it is, the bigger the dot's gonna be. And this N1, divide by a thousand, that's just the control that we're gonna use, number in one. And we're gonna divide by a thousand because otherwise it's gonna be huge. So let's go ahead and give it a size. Three is a pretty good size to start off with. There it is, pops back in, and you can see we have all these dots. All right, so I got the render 3D in my viewer here. There's a couple more issues we face. One is all the colors. You can keep it to have all the colors, but if you wanna have a, a nice kind of stylistic tone to it, you want fewer colors. So we're gonna use the custom tool to control the colors that we have. So go to your custom tool and under configure here, I'm gonna just uncheck all this stuff because right now we got tons of controls and I don't need to see all of those. I'm gonna leave everything except the number in one. All right, so now I only have the one control on my custom tool node. Now under channels here, we have red, green, blue. We want to control how many colors we have because right now we have the whole spectrum of colors 256 we just want to have a few reds few greens a few blues so what i can do is i can say floor which is going to round down i can say c1 which is the red channel coming in times n1 which is the number that we can specify divided by n1 and i can just copy and paste that into the other three because it'll be per channel now I have zero, so I don't have anything coming in there. And a good starting place is like 15. So I can choose how many colors I have in here. So let's go five. All right, so the other thing we need to do is we need a background. So I'm gonna click out here. I'm gonna add in a background, merge it in. And I'm gonna swap that because it is a background. I want it in the background. And the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale this up. So if I go to my P image emitter, I can go to my transform and I'm just gonna move this up and it's like 1.33. Now it's filling the frame. You can also add in a 3D camera, but they do the same thing. Now I can kind of see what's going on with these dots. It's probably not exactly what we want because it looks a little washed out, but it's pretty much there. This is the effect. We have our dots. They're changing in size according to luminance and we have a background, we can see it. But if you wanna do a few more things, we can do things like add in a brightness contrast, or we can make it two-tone. Now to make it two-tone, you can do a little bit of messing with the background. So let's make it say yellow background, and we can change this dot color, say something like red. Now the problem with this is you can see we have lots of different shades of red, so it's not two-tone. To make it two-tone, we're gonna to have to add in some controls on our P Custom to override these colors. So to do that on our P Custom, we go to our particle tab again, and we did ours for size. Now we're gonna do it for the red, green, and blue channel and overwrite those. So for this, I'm gonna put in if, just IF, not IIF. Everywhere else it's IIF for some reason. Here it's just IF. N2, we're gonna make that a control, equal to zero, then we get red. And if not, we get N3. I'm gonna copy and paste that. Make sure you change it to green and blue and N4 and N5. Now these are gonna be the color channels. N3 is gonna be the red channel, N4 is gonna be the green, N5 is gonna be the blue. N2 is just gonna be a checkbox to let us turn it on and off. So if we go back to my numbers here, I don't need all those numbers, so I can get rid of some of them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go right click on this, go to edit controls, and I don't need all these, I just need one through five, so I'm gonna get rid of six through eight. Easiest way to do that is just to click on six and hit okay because it's gonna move it to the user page and not the numbers. I'm gonna get rid of the other two. Okay, now I'm gonna change these. So go back, edit controls, number in two, and I'm gonna rename this. I'm gonna call it solid color. We want it to still be on the numbers page. I'm gonna change it to a checkbox. I'm gonna click okay. So now we have a checkbox. Now we have all our equations set up. Now we just need to change these to red, blue, and green channels. So number in three, we want that to be on the numbers page. We want it to be a color control. A new group, red. Edit controls, we want four. We want it to be on the numbers page. We want this to be a color control. And we want it to be in the new group that we just made 102. And we need to change this to green. And then just do the same for blue.
that I did mess up there and just make sure you put them all in the same group in group 102. Now we have our color and we can override it. I click the checkbox, I change this to red. Now we have two tone. Voila, you're pretty much there. So if you want to add in a few things, you could add in a brightness contrast, you could fiddle with a few things like the gamma or the gain. If you want to change the dot size, you could do that. What you'd have to do is you'd have to go to the P image emitter. Make sure if you want to make the dots bigger, you can make density smaller. So you could go 05 on this and then you'd go to your custom tool for your size and you'd make it something bigger like five. And so you'd get a bigger dot pattern or you could do the reverse of that and make it like two and change your spacing is something like 0.2 and then you get a whole lot more detail and smaller dots. It's really up to you at this point how you want to change the color, change the size and maybe change the density. Maybe you don't want to see these dots and maybe you can just crank up the contrast and just blend them all together and just have the dots in a few spots. It's really up to you, but this is the basic effect. Let me show you a few more examples of things I've done. So here just with a little bit more brightness contrast, this one, just the two tone and you can just plug in different pictures to see how it comes out. Unfortunately, it changes a lot depending on the contrast of your picture, so you will have to tweak it every time you get a new photo, but you can make some pretty interesting stuff. I really like how this one came out. It reminds me of an old video game footage. So this effect is pretty diverse. You can make a whole lot of things with it. It's pretty cool, and that's the end of the video. And since I never know how to end these, we'll make something awesome. Cheers. <laughs>